Hi stationary friends. Welcome to Ginger PT Pins. Uh, my name is Sarah and um, today we're going to do a um, DIY <laughs> craft activity together. Um, I um, have shown you before my ink pen and ink tracking system. So I have this uh, a5 Hobonichi notebook. This is just the, it's a yellow covered notebook. And each page is a different pen. And I write down what ink I put in there and what date I ink up the pen. And then what date I clean the pen, which I think I'm going to stop doing because they usually sit in a um, to be cleaned container for long enough that it's not really relevant uh, to keep track of the date that I cleaned it. But um, to find these I have numbered the pages in the top corner and I have an index in the front. So this is, it's fine, it has worked pretty well but I have officially run out of room and um, I mean I know this is a lot of pens but there are a ton in here that I have sold. So um, I have a lot of wasted pages in here. Um, of pens that I no longer have and I have been wanting a new system that makes it easier to find the pen that I'm looking for. This is not really very functional. So my thought was well I want a binder something I can take pages in and out of to put them in alphabetical order. So I thought about um, like the, a disc bound system like um, like the Happy Planner or the tool from Office Depot systems or something. Um, but I don't really love disc bound systems. I don't like how it sits on your table. I use a disc bound notebook so I'm at work, but I take the pages out and use them flat on my desk and then put them back in. Um, and I just, I don't know. And especially for using Tomoe River paper, which is so thin, um, I just don't know about using it disc bound. So I thought, well, let me find an A6 size binder <laughs> and that was just about impossible um not impossible it was not impossible um I love using my Hobonichi covers so that was a big part of this consideration so I thought okay well maybe there's a binder like a little tiny binder that will fit in here haven't been able to find anything there's probably something like in the Japanese market but that's harder for me to get it's hard for me to search on Amazon um all those sorts of things. So anyway, I started um, I, I started looking around at what could I do, and I came across these plain uh, binders. I mean, it's just the rings, binder rings, like replacement rings. Um, so I thought, okay, well, let me get some A6 ones. Um, I did buy the A6 like loose rings. Um, they are right now in my car to be <laughs> returned. Um, because they just, the, um, the actual diameter of the rings was too big to fit inside of the Hobonichi. And so then I found, I'm sorry, I found these notebooks, which are also A6, these binders. And in the picture on Amazon, this, these rings looked a lot slimmer <laughs> than they are. And so I thought, ooh, this will be great because then I can just cut this plastic down and put it right into my Hobonichi. But when it got here, I immediately knew by the size of the, um, the spine that this was not going to fit, <laughs> it's kind of comical actually, inside of the Hobonichi. So the third one that I ordered, those will go back to Amazon as well, which I think I got both of the, I didn't spend more than about five or $6 on any of this stuff, but um, the A7, is what I landed on. So this is a size smaller. Um, technically you could punch, well, A7 is like half the size of, of A6. So it's like little bitty, but um, I found these A7 binders. I bought two of them and um, I'm gonna show you how I turned, how I, how I make a binder to go in here. I've made one already and I've started the second one so that we won't be here forever. Um, but I just wanted to show you how to do this. And I also wanted to show you my two new A6 covers, Hobonichi covers. These are 
um, pre-owned. I found them on eBay for a really great price. I love these covers and I was really kind of sad that I didn't get them. You know, I was um, frugal with my money back when these came out, I think in 2019. Um, so I found these. This one has a little pen mark right here. But aside from that, these both pretty much look immaculate. Um, they both came from the same seller and I'm really happy with them. I love this artwork um, so much. And on this one, I love the little stars and the cherries on the pin loops. So I just wanted to show you that. These are what I was um, practicing in today at work because I didn't have my, <sighs> this one. So anyway, I thought I would show you those. I'm always excited for new Hobonichi things, even new to me Hobonichi things. So, okay, let me move this out of the way. So I started by taking my A6 notebook and I used, I didn't use this one, I used a different one, but I took this, I opened it up in the middle pretty much and measured it out. Um, this is a piece of just 32 uh, pound white paper that I laminated with three mil um, lamination film. Um, and then I cut it down to basically this size because I knew that, that this, you know, spine would fit inside of the cover. So, um, anyway, so I, it took me a trial and error. I did this a couple of times before I got one that worked. And then I took, um, I made a couple of marks right in the middle here to show myself where the middle was. Um, I tried to kind of pre-bend this a little bit, but this lamination doesn't like, it only creases when you like fully crease it and then it doesn't look very good. So I'll show you the other one I made in a minute maybe, but, um, so anyway, so then I took my, uh, this and I took my finder rings and put them right next to it as close to the, 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 uh, centered horizontally as I could vertically as I could and marked where my holes needed to be. I used one of those single hole punches and punched holes and was left with this card. Oh, and I used my little corner rounder to kind of round the corners a little bit. Um, here is why I used a laminated page. I started out with just a piece of cardstock and what I found was it didn't want to slip in and out. And with a binder, when you open your cover, it wants to slide just a little bit, like it needs to have a little bit of slip. And so the lamination, that's the point of that. So if you can find like a coated, that's not even coated, but like, you know, a lot of notebooks are kind of coated on the outside. That's enough slip. If you can find just a coated piece of cardstock or something. So then this came with little fasteners. Technically you could probably punch holes in your Hobonichi cover if you wanted to. I'm not doing that, but you could punch the whole put holes in this and then attach your binder right to it. I'm not doing that. I love that cover way too much. Um, but then this was easier than I even expected to put those on there. I thought that this was going to require like hammering and stuff like that, but no, it has these little tiny screws. So it takes a little bit of work because it's just so small to kind of get my fingers in there. Um, I'm testing out this new microphone for the second video. So I'm hoping my sound is good and that the neighbor's air conditioner just came on. So we'll see how loud it is. Okay. Fiddling with the screw. Let's see if the screwdriver. other one. This package did come with one extra set, which is nice. So if your little um, thing were to ever come undone, of course, I'm going to have to try to put that somewhere where I remember <laughs> that I have it. But this pack of two, um, 
two sets of binder rings was only about five dollars maybe close to six dollars so not an expensive thing for you know i mean that's cheaper than buying a new notebook you know um in the pen in the fountain pen world for like tomoe river paper or anything like that so okay here we go All right, and then I'm going to hold it up, try to keep the back side from spinning so I can tighten this down some more. That's pretty good. Let's do this one. Yeah, it's still pretty wiggly, so. I just press down on my leather, my faux leather desk mat. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I may try to tighten it up a little bit more after a while. But anyway, there we are. We have a small binder. These rings are really, seem to be really well made. I mean, they snap open and, and close really easily. And... <laughs> This fits right inside my cover. I'm really proud of this. Um, I tend to leave my little bookmarks. Ugh. In most of my Hobonichi notebooks, I don't use the little bookmarks. Sorry, I made that way harder than it had to be. And so I end up putting the bookmarks behind the notebooks and they just are decoration. But look at that. It goes right in there, fits really well. Um, it does want to pop open right now, but I think with a little use, it will stop. And this notebook in particular, I always keep a pen in it. Okay, so there is my little binder. Um, I think I'm going to start over <laughs> with my notebook. I have tried to cut down just now. I tried to cut down my Hobonichi notebook. And it's hard to do, I mean, I don't have the correct tools probably to do it anyway. And I think I just want to start over without the page numbers and just be, be fresh about it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'll keep this so I can still reference it. Um, but what I have that I'm going to use, I'm still going to kind of repurpose something, is um, I have this A6, no, A5. Um notebook that I put tabs in um, and I put different kinds of paper. So I have Rhodia, Kokuyo, um, this is Ap Apica. I don't love the Apica paper. I don't think it's very fountain pen friendly. This is um, Midori paper. So I just had sort of different paper samples and I punched holes in them. Like I cut up notebooks, punched holes to make my own little binder of all different types of paper. And I like it. I just have not reached for it for a while. So I took everything out and bundled it back together with its own kinds. And it's all kind of just in this bundle here for me to, you know, decide how I want to use it. Um, I still like the idea. But in that, I have this pack of Tomoe River white paper. And I think I'm going to cut this down um, and punch holes. <laughs> in the side. So it'll have these little three holes at the, at the bottom, but rather than waste this, I mean, I know there's other things I could use it for, but rather than, than, uh, let this go to waste in any, any other way, I'm going to cut this in half and use it in this notebook. So let me see if I can work on that and I will come back and show you the results. Okay. So we've just about got to the end here. Um, I made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> trying to uh, do this. Um, first of all, I forgot my little paper chopper. I have one of those little, like, the flat board with the whoosh, chop, paper choppers. I have a little mini one at work, and I meant to bring it home, and uh, I forgot. So then I thought, oh, no problem. I'll cut this with my rotary cutter and mat. But the, but my cutting mat was rolled up and it, uh, broke when I tried to unroll it. 
And so I uh, tried to like force it flat again and got it just flat enough to <laughs> put the paper down, put the pages down and use my metal ruler and my rotary cutter to uh, chop it. Well, anyway, it didn't work out well because the thing was, the, the mat was curly and the paper was slippery. And so uh, all this to say, <laughs> maybe don't cut the paper the way I did. <laughs> but um, overall, this is working okay. And also the paper was slippery, so it chopped it crazy. Oh man, this has been more of an adventure than I kind of expected. But I am almost finished with my little binder. I also put too many, I guess I put too many pages in this um, hole punch at one time and they got stuck. So I have a little pile of ripped Tomoe River paper that now it's like, well, I don't want to throw it away because it's the old Tomoe River paper. <laughs> but also it's not usable really. Um, I think I'm going to use these as sort of the front and back. I've got one in the front already, so put those aside. And here is my little notebook. Let's see. Okay, so they do stick out a little bit. I was wondering about that. I think I'm going to wait until I go to work tomorrow and I can use my big paper chopper and cut these all down together so that they'll be kind of straight and I'll take just um, you know a quarter of an inch off the edge so it'll fit in there but here we are I have an A6 notebook the pages turn really well um, so I can take things in and out put my pens in alphabetical order um, yeah I think I'm gonna like that and it closes up nice and tight. Like I said, that um, cardstock hopefully will kind of bend and stay after a little while. We'll see. I don't know if I can put this pen in here like this. Yeah, it's a tight fit. Yeah, I do definitely need to cut down those pages. Um, but once I cut down those pages, I think this is going to be great. I'm really excited about it. It's exactly what I wanted. I don't feel like it's going to damage my cover. Um, and I'll show you quickly the first one I made. I tried to sort of bend the cover into position. And so now it has these creases in it. Can you see those? And even still, it just pops open. So I think that's going to be something that will just have to come with time or never. I don't know. But I do have another one, so I can put this into another um, Hobonichi cover if I want to. And there is my uh, crazy, I could call it a tutorial, but really it was sort of a trial and error. Um, turning an A6 Hobonichi cover into a binder. Thank you so much for being with me today. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. and. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Do you have, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm asking for. But anyway, pretty excited about this. I think it'll be really nice to have, to use. And um, I'm sure you will see this plenty in upcoming videos because I show it pretty regularly. So anyway, thank you so much uh, for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.